Welcome back to BE iLab. In this video, we're delving into the assessment phase of our journey with the trained deep learning model on the Eurosat benchmark dataset for land cover and land use classification. So, let's get started. In this section, we import the necessary packages to evaluate our trained CNN model. First, we import the matplotlib and seaborne packages for visualization and scikit-learn for computing the evaluation metrics such as F1 score, accuracy, precision, recall, and confusion matrix. Now, let's visualize the training progress of our deep learning model using matplotlib. In the code snippet below, we set the figure size and DPI for our figure. This line plots the training loss over epics. The history object typically contains information about the model's performance during training, including metrics like loss. We're using history.historyloss to access the training loss values for each epoch and plotting it. Similarly, this line plots the validation loss over epochs. The val underscore loss values in the history object represent the model's performance on a separate validation dataset during training. In the next section, we set the loss function for the y-axis and the epochs for the x-axis. This line adds a legend to the plot, helping to identify which line corresponds to the training loss and which corresponds to the validation loss. The log parameter is set to best to automatically choose the optimal location for the legend. Finally, this line displays the plot. In the first cell, the model is evaluated on the validation data x underscore val and y underscore val. The evaluate method typically returns a list of evaluation metrics specified during the model training, for example, loss and accuracy. The results are stored in the variable evaluation underscore results. Then, this variable is printed. In the next section, predictions are made using the trained model on the validation data, x underscore val. The predict method generates predicted output for each input sample. The shape of the predicted values is then printed. After obtaining the predicted values, the np.argmax function is used to find the indices of the maximum values along axis 1. This is common when dealing with classification problems where the output is often a probability distribution across classes. In the next code snippet, classification metrics are calculated and printed to assess the performance of a trained deep learning model. The F1 score, accuracy, precision, and recall are computed using scikit-learn functions with the macroaverage method, the true class labels, and the predicted class labels. Now, here's a challenge for you. Modify the code to calculate the F1 score, precision, and recall for each class. Get hands-on and share your solutions in the comments. In this section, a confusion matrix is generated using the confusion underscore matrix function from scikit-learn. The confusion matrix is a table that describes the performance of a classification model by comparing the actual class labels with the predicted class labels. The class's variable contains the class labels, and the u and v variables are assigned the class labels for the y-axis and x-axis, respectively. These will be used for tick labels in the heat map. Next, the matplotlib package is used to create a figure with a specific size and resolution for the heat map. Then, the Seaborn's heat map function is used to create the heat map B using the confusion matrix CMAT. The heat map includes annotations, the RDYLGN color map, and tick labels on both the y axis and x axis. These lines adjust the tick label sizes on both the y axis and x axis of the heat map for better readability. Finally, labels are added to the y axis and x axis for clarity. Actual represents the true class labels, and predicted represents the predicted class labels. These lines generate a heat map using Seaborn and is visualized through the matplotlib library. The heat map visually represents how well the model predicts each class compared to the actual ground truth, with colors indicating the number of instances in each category. This visualization helps understand the model's strengths and weaknesses in classification across different land cover and land use classes. Thank you for joining us in this tutorial. If you found this video helpful or have any questions, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more content. The code examples can be found on our GitHub page. See you in the next video.